Hey everybody, welcome to Media Revival Television to another episode of Into the Light here live on MediaRevival.Television.TV. I'm really excited, man. Today we've got a, a real good friend of ours, Robert Dosti here, um, doing the program with us. And I'm really excited because I feel like God's going to open some eyes today, Rob. You know, I, I think you've got a really powerful testimony and uh, you've got a lot to share with the people that are... Uh, that are going to be watching this right now, all over the world, man. We, you know, we did a radio program this morning on Radio Air Jesus. Yeah, it was fun. <laughs> and uh, we had all kinds of people like logged in from all over the world. Prayer requests were coming in. Yeah. Uh, people were just really getting ignited and activated. So, uh, we're really excited to to even be here right now. Amen. Thanks for having me, man. Um, yeah, it's a blessing, bro. You know, um, lately we've really been seeing uh, this last episode we did. It was called "Unlocking the Sears." Um, we had uh, Joni, uh, Joni Ames was with us, a powerful prophetic ministry. She got a morning star, and I think she's out of West Virginia right now. But uh, really unlocked a lot of the supernatural uh, encounters, the, the prophetic, the destiny, unlocking the seer within us. But see, you have something. You have a really powerful testimony of the supernatural I guess encounters, you know, so to say. Um, I want to allow you just to kind of introduce your ministry and kind of uh, share a little bit about what 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 your ministry is about. Okay. Well, um, yeah, like I said, thanks for having me. Welcome everybody that's uh, that's watching right now. And and uh, man, I just pray that even as you guys are watching, the Lord just begins to touch you, and the Holy Spirit's just moving. Waves of His glory are just just flowing through your living room or wherever you're you're watching from right now in the world. Um, so, me and my wife, my wife's name is Millie. We have three children. We live in Las Vegas, and a lot of people, you know, they're like Las Vegas. Why would you, you know? But man, where sin abounds, grace abounds. God is moving powerfully. He's given us a word that it's not Sin City; it's Sun City. S O N. Like that's like awesome. Yeah. I like yeah. that. I like and, that. Um, and so uh, we run Robert O.C. Ministries. Uh, it was founded in 2007. Um, it started in the Satanist bars and clubs at death metal concerts and just seeing gang members and witches and Satanists radically, you know, come to Jesus and respond to the gospel. And uh, our vision is to come alongside uh, humanity as individually and, and, and as a whole and just help them unwrap the gift that is Christ, the hope of glory. Um, and I'll talk a little bit more about that later, but, um, but we've just seen, we've seen a lot of breakthrough in the areas of like witchcraft and the occult and, uh, people coming out of religion and just meeting Jesus for the first time and also healing like physical healing mm. We see a lot of a lot of cool miracles like that. We we love yeah, we like that. We like miracles yeah. <laughs> We love missions um, We over the past probably I don't know I'd say over the past 10 years even before the ministry officially started from that point to now We've probably had a presence in about 40 almost 45 countries. That's really amazing by the grace of God and we just that's really where our heart is. We love missions. We love, we love villages. We love, we love the Holy Ghost. <laughs> amen. 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 Yeah, so so you, uh, you do a lot of traveling in Alaska. I see like on your Facebook page, you're always like in Alaska, it seems yeah. like. And for all of our Alaskan friends watching, how you guys doing? Love you guys. Yeah, that's cool. Um, am I, I'm here, right? I'm yeah. You're, sure oh yeah. You're good. You're good. Okay. Yeah. And, uh, and yeah, so the Lord's really opened doors in the Alaskan villages. And a lot of people ask me, you know, what is it like? And I've been to every country in Central America, every country in South America. I've seen, I've seen the darkness that exists in isolated villages in different countries around the world. But I've never quite seen um, the kind of darkness that we've encountered in the villages of Alaska. And so I, I don't want to leave it on a negative note because we've seen the Holy Spirit move probably more powerfully than almost anywhere I've seen on earth as well in the Alaskan villages. Yeah. Um, there's some real isolated communities. A lot of them are 24 hours of darkness and the Lord just gave us a real favor. We were adopted into two of the different tribes of people up there. Our wow. second son was born up there in, in one of these uh, communities. So, so yeah, and we've just seen incredible stuff. Lord Amen. Jesus. That's that's really awesome. You know, um, in in reading some of your book, because you got a new book coming out, yeah, yeah. and I want you to share about that. Yeah, you, you got a new book coming out, so that's really exciting. But in reading some of your your new book, and then also kind of a, a, a just researching and, and you know being friends on Facebook and in conversations that we've had, man, you came out of a really uh, man dark place, bro. You know, you you yeah. you got a pretty amazing testimony, and you know most people would think, you know, 
metal, hardcore, music, rock, and then you automatically assume, oh, Satan worshiper, witches, and, you know, spells. And, I mean, that's just the, the, the what people would just kind of think. So what would what is your, I guess, how, how did that even happen, man? I mean, like, you know, without, I mean, because I know it's, there could be a whole lot, and it's all in his book. It's all in his book, so you can get the book. But, I mean, you got a really powerful testimony, man, you know? Yeah, um, well, I was, um, for, for a lot of you, you probably identify with this if you're watching and you were raised in, you know, some form of strict religion. Maybe it wasn't even Christian religion, but just religion, some form of, you know, formulated practice. And um, so I was raised Seventh-day Adventist, and, and Seventh-day Adventist people are, are amazing. I mean, there's, but they, they, there was a focus on, as far as the practice was concerned, there was a focus on, you know, what we had to do to get into heaven and to make God happy versus, you know. And so I was always confused about... Uh, who God was, because I would hear stories about Jesus and how Jesus was loving, but then I'd also hear lots of stories about how God would judge and kill people, and so I was just confused on how that, you know, mm -hmm. so as a child, I was pretty scared of God, um, I was, you know, I, I was afraid that Antichrist was going to come and chop our heads off, and that's just, there was a lot of fear, you know, that was just... I think I saw that video. Yeah. Uh, in church, growing up. <laughs> right? Yeah. <laughs> So there was a lot of fear involved, and so I was afraid of God, and I was afraid of the devil. I was afraid of both of them. And so where do you kind of turn? Like, you kind of look within yourself to find, you're looking for answers, you know? Like, if you're scared of God, you're scared of the devil. And um, and so the turning point for me was really um, my dad uh, divorced my mom and left our family when I was probably about 11, and that just plunged me to a deep, dark place, you know? If some of you are watching and you've you remember the first time you ever encountered feelings of you know violence or rage and you didn't even know those type things existed, uh, that's kind of when it started for me and I ended up in the psychiatrist's office and I, and you know they wanted to put me on medications and they said I had this and that diagnosed me with bipolar and chronic depression and um, a couple other things. Um, so I was looking for answers, you know what I mean, and and that's when I began to go to public school and I met up with a group of kids that looked like corpses <laughs> they look like the walking dead you know and is that, is that the black eyeliner yeah they look yeah, yeah, yeah. kind of like raccoon makeup Aren't on their you? face yeah and uh and and i was interested because you know from the time i was young i had had some supernatural encounters and i never got i'd never gotten an explanation for what they were uh and so when i saw these guys and i was really interested in death and darkness and they just they looked ugly and i felt ugly and i felt dark and so we just connected and they were the ones who introduced me to satanism which you know that over the next whatever five years there was just a, a long journey of you know in through satanism wiccan uh which different forms of witchcraft into finally into satan worship so wow that's that's pretty deep, man. Yeah, <laughs> really. <laughs> I, I, you know, I remember growing up. And, it didn't and, end there. Don't worry. Yeah, I remember growing up, man, and uh, being into like I was in the youth group, and and uh, I, but I remember growing up, and, and back then I was really religious in the church, man. Real, you know, just a real religious spirit. But I can remember my pastors going into my my house at one point, man, and ripping off all of my my metal pictures and my posters on the wall because everything was demonic, man. Right. Yeah. Everything. Do you, do you think that's true, man? Do you think like, like demons reside in posters and t-shirts? Uh, I think, I think when things are created, they give off certain, there's a spirit behind it, mm -hmm. but, um, I wouldn't, I wouldn't teach that a demon, you know, physically is inhabiting a piece of paper yeah i i remember this is i because i remember i had a batman t-shirt on man this is wild i'm just i'm just remembering this as we're talking about it but had a batman t-shirt and i remember we went to a youth camp and they said you need to clean everything in your house you need to do this and and bring all your belongings well they made me take my batman shirt man and i love batman dude <laughs> and yeah. i remember putting in the batman shirt in this big bonfire and all of a sudden, they're like it was burning, and and all they start seeing how they saw the spirit coming out of the shirt. Yeah. You, what do you think about that? Is that is that something? Uh, well, uh, I have to say, in my own experience, um, I met Jesus in two thousand one. I did. Ha I had a bonfire, mm -hmm. and you know, but this wasn't Batman shirts. This was oh, the the hard. Uh, yeah, this yeah. was like satanic books, witchcraft books, um, pornography, just pretty much anything I used in spells. Um, and there was definitely some strange things that happened when I did that because there was a real hold on my life. Yeah. 
Um, but at the same time, I think religion empowers the devil. I think religion gives so much power to the enemy. And when I say religion, I'm talking about, you know, like working your way to God. And I think it started in the Garden of Eden. Like what the serpent did was he planted this seed of distrust toward God in Adam and Eve saying, oh, you don't understand. God's actually hiding something from you. And if you'll do something, then you'll be like him and even better. Like there was this this right. seed. And so then from that point, they felt like, oh, there's something we can do to get to God and to be more like God when they were already perfectly like God. And um, so when I talk about religion, that's what I'm talking about. Religion means a binding, so it can be bondage. Um, And so I think religion gives a lot, uh, gives way more power to the enemy than he has. And, uh, and, and And it lifts up. Um, the enemy a lot of times higher than you know it has him more forefront on our minds maybe the devil's in this maybe the devil's in that maybe the devil's in this but in reality when you have the mind of christ you see jesus in things not that's the right. devil that's right <laughs> and so, so the reality of it is is that we have power and authority over that regardless of the fact yeah i mean and the, the burning is just an act of it yeah it's like an act yeah. of it's like b- baptism it's yeah. an act of faith it's saying i'm right. i'm saying that i'm done with this that but at the same time that doesn't mean that we support you know that we go out and buy and support things that are created from a spirit of something that's anti-christ either but at the same time it doesn't have power over us that's right and and i think that's a good that's a good point because i think there's a lot of people that may be watching even now or maybe even a later time where um maybe you do have some of that stuff in your and and it may it may be time for you to clean house it may be a time for you to clean house and get rid of things that may have a stronghold and uh because i do believe this i do believe that there are are leeching spirits that attach themselves to certain things and uh so it is time for us to kind of clean house sometimes yeah well i think if there's if there's something and i'm and so i'm trying to draw the difference between that there's a demon possessing a piece of paper however compared to maybe something that just has an it 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 can't it, it just influences you a certain direction and it's like the glory's not on it but there's a different a strange fire a strange spirit on it that that kind of moves your heart in a certain direction then yeah just get rid of it man don't you know i remember i was in south america um i was in uruguay south america and we were preaching in the streets and this one lady she she walked all the way across the village to come and she she came right up to us and she said i'm a witch and i believe this message you're preaching and i want you to come to my house and so i'm thinking to myself okay so i got a couple guys and we went to her house and she had all this witch doctor stuff all around her house. Now, I believe that there's definitely an influence. There's de- there are definitely doors uh, that that yeah. I wouldn't want open in my house. Right. Not that I'm afraid of it, but it's just I don't need it. You Jesus need it. is right. all we need. Right. Right. And so she said, well, what should I do? She had these pictures. She was into, like, Santeria, and she had these pictures that would literally, like, smoke cigarettes and the smoke would protect her house and all this stuff, oh, wow. you know. And she said, what do I do? And I said, I said, I, well, Jesus has all the power. He's the head of principalities and powers. But if you really want to make a statement that Jesus is all you need, burn it all. That's what I said. Yeah. And she said, well, my husband hates God. He hates Americans. And if he comes home when I'm doing this, like he's going to kill you guys, you know. And I said, well, then we better get to it quick. <laughs> <You know? laughs> and so we had this big bonfire in her backyard. We're burning all this witch doctor stuff and all this santeria stuff. And, and, and as we're doing it, the guy comes home. And he, he got up in our face. His face was red. I mean, he was, he was ready to kill us. He was ready to strangle wow. us. And I just I stood right to his face. And I'm like, all right, Holy Ghost. And he tried to lunge at us, and he was shaking, and he just he, – it's like he couldn't get any closer. Finally, yeah. he took off and ran down the hallway and slammed the door, and we never wow. saw him again, and we burned all their stuff, and he, he didn't Amen. touch us, you know. So I think there's a supernatural grace, and I think the Lord honors it when we're saying, you know what, this is – this is a door that I, I don't feel the glory on this. I think he honors it when we just say, let's get rid of it, man. Amen. This is all we need. That's yeah. right. Greater is he in us. That's right. Um, were you always interested in the supernatural? <clears throat> yes, I was. Because, like I said, growing up, I had some interesting things going on. Okay. Let me see. We might have a little technical problems there. There you go. There you go. We're back on. Not sure okay, so let me ask that question one more yeah. time. Were you always interested in the supernatural? Yes, I definitely was. Definitely were. Um, and and a lot of people ask me, you know, is it uh, is it unhealthy that I'm interested in the supernatural? No, 
Um, however, I think it's unhealthy if everything is super spiritual because God has us on this earth, and I think that the supernatural and the natural, they're, they're one. Give, give me, give me an together. example of super spiritual. What is that? I think when it's like we, we can't just enjoy time with our family and just have a family day and eat at a restaurant and take our kids to see a movie or something without like making everything spiritual you know everywhere and 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 just i think when we can't enjoy our life or just have a a conversation about the weather we should be able to do that without saying you know well i think it's uh, you know getting all because we need to if we're going to talk to unbelievers you know (laughs) at the same time uh we don't want i don't want to come off like that i want to i want to be able to just talk about music i want to be able to just talk about a tv show but at the same time if the holy spirit begins to speak then boom, you just release it because we're right. made for both realms. We're the breath of God and the dust of the earth together. That's right. So that's a very good point. Um, you're right, and I've seen that a lot. You know, and, and I think uh, growing up in that type of environment, that type of church, you you see those things where it can't be just about it being a a nice day. All of a sudden, it becomes about the fire of God that rained down and rained here, or there was an earthquake here, or there was, and they, it, it, they kind of try to super spiritualize everything. Right. Yeah. So are we having some problems with that. Yeah, it's just got a red red light. Okay, so we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna work through on that. So, so let me let me ask you another question. Okay. Um, what what planted a seed of distrust and uh, and you toward God? What was that? Want me to use this one for now? Yeah, I think the battery died in that. Um, what planted a seed of, of distrust? Honestly, it was um, when my dad left. Uh, the first thought I had was, maybe this is my fault. Maybe I shouldn't have been born. And then the next thought was, wait a minute, if God's so good, this is his fault. Why did he ruin my life? And I think that's um, what a lot of people think. When something bad happens to them or a family member, they automatically attribute it to God. And they say, well, if God loved me or God was real, this wouldn't happen. And then they go on as an atheist or an agnostic or, you know, they dedicate their lives to some other spiritual teaching. Um, but I would say definitely that when my dad left, I felt like I felt like our, you know, our family fell apart. My life fell apart. And I felt like um if God was real, then this wouldn't have happened. So there was that seed of distrust that was planted in, in me. Um, and so I started looking for answers elsewhere. And, and that was in, in, in which w- Wicca or was it Wicca or just, just Satanism? Is that when you started searching that, that style of that lifestyle? Yeah, yeah, it was. And um, it, it was kind of a mix. Like I had friends that were into, I, I, I met friends that were into Wiccan, which is, you know, they call it like white it, you know, it's not evil. It's just, it, but again, I think that any door outside of Jesus is not the right door, you know, as far as what scripture says. And, um, but yeah, some of it was Wiccan. Some of it was Satanism, which is more of like, you're your own God type teaching and there's different rituals and things. Um, but yeah, I just look for answers wherever I could find them. But because I felt like God hated me because he ruined my family and he ruined my life, I felt like I needed to look for answers in anything that was the opposite of him. And and how did you how was how did how did God redeem that for you? How did God redeem it? Well, that that's that's a really awesome question because see that's the biggest thing when we we've ministered in clubs and bars, death metal concerts. You know, it wasn't always that we'd minister and equip believers in churches and in conferences. It, it, sometimes we do outreaches and um and that's the thing that I love to hear. I've heard witches come to me and say, "Man, I didn't know God felt this way about me." And that's kind of, that's how he redeemed it for me. I, I He gave me, a, I guess I call it a road to Damascus encounter. Um, I was, I went to a Christian music festival with some friends that were into Satanism. And I went there to, to, to convert Christians to the devil. And I had a radical encounter on the third night with Jesus. And, and I heard, and, and I can't get into all the details, but man, it was just like a heavy, ecstasy came over me and see I I was used to supernatural encounters I was used to feeling spirits and things like that but this was beyond anything I'd ever felt in my life my body was physically shaking and so outside of normally it'd be like I'm gonna channel a spirit but this time it was like a spirit is channeling me (laughs) like and that's the kind of language that I use but I'm like what kind of spirit has the power to channel me this this is crazy my whole body's shaking I, I felt like this bubbling 
rebelling inside, and I could never say the name Jesus. I hated the name Jesus, man. When people would say the name Jesus, I would literally want to kill them. I hated that name. And uh, and as this encounter was happening, I felt this bubbling inside. It kind of felt like I was going to vomit, and I'm skipping a lot of details, but all the details are in the book, so you you know, like the book. like you all the, the details. And uh, <laughs> But anyway, and so my mouth opens and like a speeding bullet, Jesus, the name of Jesus just flies out. like, And it, man, I just, now I'm breaking into tears because I couldn't say that name. And wow. um, I think the biggest lie that I believe was that even if God was real, he would never be able to forgive me for the way that I'd blasphemed him and come against him anyway. So I figured, what's the sense in in uh, in in going after God? He's gonna he hates me anyway, you know. So he by giving me a personal encounter with him, he redeemed that whole mindset. Like it was he he yeah. changed my whole mindset when I felt his love and I felt his power for the first time. You know, because even as a kid, I heard about Jesus healing people, but I never knew you could feel his power now Amen. and and so yeah. then i knew i knew that i knew that this is what i'd been looking for all along i agree bro you know what we we are now living in a show me generation we talked about this on the radio yeah. today where the people the young the generation the young adults even where we're at right now they're so intrigued by the supernatural man if you watch they're watching the television shows that are that the supernatural the ghost hunters there there's yeah for there's, sure there's something that's a real a, hunger there's a hunger for it, but it's because that hunger is for for the things of god yeah and our our daddy daddy god is power yeah is power so the thing you know and I, i'll never forget one of the things that 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 will transform the people who don't believe one of the things that will transform people who are atheists uh or, or satanists I really believe that the only thing that can transform those type of people is the power and the demonstration of God. Yeah, yeah you know, definitely. When we began to speak prophetically, like words of knowledge, man, that, that only God would know, that will transform a generation, man, to know who God is. Why are people going to, to see people that are reading tarot cards and, and doing, you know, all these different right. voodoos and stuff? Because they're hungry for... For that, you know, and God has again. We need to start up something like a prophetic generation, like just declare <laughs> and just begin to. I mean, that's who we need to be. That's what we need to Amen. do. And we, Amen, we should man. start that like a prophetic. Yeah. No, just come I'm on. Sure they have that, but we. This is what our generation need. This is what the people of God need. Yeah. We need His power, man, and to demonstrate that. And I just can't say that more because I really just strongly feel that. Um, that's what will change people. Amen. You know, but being, that's what changes you, man. Yeah. You didn't know what it was that night that you were there, and all of a sudden, God just bow. Yeah. And it just changed you, and you screamed, yeah. Jesus. And you think about Paul, well, you know, on the road to Damascus, um, in the book of Acts, it's like, even when he had that encounter, it says lights shone around him from heaven. He was knocked off his horse or donkey or whatever. Right. And, and and he was blind for days, like physically blind from the glory of God. And I remember asking the Lord, man, that, you know, why'd you do that? It's not very nice. You made him go blind. I thought you heal blindness, you know. And the Lord said to me, no, but you don't understand. He needed to be blinded for a few days so that he knew that from that point on, he would know nothing but my glory. Wow. So it's like when ah. literally when we have ah. when when he reveals Ooh. himself and, I, and and this is the foundational scripture of I've been running with this since June 29th, 2001, when I had that encounter with Jesus. You know, that's what, 14 years ago now. But I've been running with this scripture, Acts 26, 18. It says to open, this was the, the mandate Jesus gave to Paul to open their eyes. And right there, that signifies awakening, awakening. His spirit wakes us up to open their eyes, to turn them from darkness to light, from the power of Satan unto God, that they might receive two things, forgiveness of sins and an inheritance uh, of faith in Jesus, wow. being sanctified by him. Yes, yes. I, amen. You know, uh, walking this supernatural life that the Lord allows you to, to, to do right now, I, you see all kinds of things. The angelic, um, the, the demonic as well. Yeah. Share some of the, the most profound. You know, give us a, a, one of your most profound. We're not going to say pro most profound because we're going to say that for another episode. But okay. give me one of these angelic encounters, just a God moment where it was just wow. Okay. Man, that's, <laughs> that's a hard yeah. one. Okay. Well, no, no, it's good. Um, I think 
the Lord, he likes to, he likes to, uh, he's the same yesterday, today, and forever, but he always likes to surprise us because these new mercies are new every day, all at the same time, if you can wrap your mind around that. And I remember I was, you know, when I first, man, when I first got saved, I was like, I was looking for demons everywhere because I knew how to see demons. I knew how to see the darkness. And so even when I pray for people, I would line up people, I would line up people and literally like go person to person looking in their eyes. Is there a devil in there? You better manifest right now if there's a demon in there, you know, and I was like, I knew how to see demons. And I, and so I, you know, but I came to a point where I got tired of seeing demons everywhere. And I said, Lord, I want to see some angels, man. Like, I want to see some heavenly stuff. I'm tired of seeing devils all over. I know how to see devils, you know. And um, and it, it probably didn't happen until maybe, I mean, I felt stuff, but I didn't really see something until I think it was maybe 2010 when the first time that I, and all it was was it was the wing of an angel. And I remember I was, I was getting ready to minister, and I was looking up at the pastors, and I saw this, whoo, just this, it was silver, and it, all I didn't see, the, all I saw was a wing, and it was, it, it knocked, it knocked me out, I was like on the floor, I couldn't even, my whole body was just pulsating, you know what I mean, oh, yeah. and, um, and, 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 and there's only been probably a, a, just a couple of times that I've seen the angelic, but there is a huge difference between when demons show up and when angels show up, uh, when demons show up, there's always just a, they're, they're after attention, they manifest and they're like, they want everybody to be scared. They want everybody to, to see, oh, there's power in the darkness there. But when angels show up, uh, like, and you can physically sense it or see it, it's like, God. boom, yeah. something happens. Yeah. They're not receiving any glory for themselves. Yeah. Uh, the atmosphere just shifts. It just changes, yeah. man. And, um, and, and, yeah, so the Lord's shown us on a couple of occasions the specific angels he's assigned us to, uh, assigned to us, um, some of their names and that's wild and some of the they have specific mandates and assignments and things it's just really crazy um maybe i'll share more about that on the, on the next show that's that we're gonna you do know, uh, my wife has a really awesome encounter about that and one of the angels that's assigned to this particular ministry radio jesus and media Bible yeah. television his name is transformer transformer he's come on man angel, bro. that's Woo! great come on i believe he's here right now that's great man yeah, i believe he's he's here right now and that people that are watching are being transformed and yes. impacted. So yes, man, yes, awesome, good stuff. Yes, thank you, Lord. Wow, that's awesome, man. Um, fired up. <laughs> let me ask you: walking this life you now, now, now that you're where you're at, several, how, you said about 15 years now, right? Is that what you said? Yeah, four, 14, 14, 2001. So it just do you yeah. ever feel like a relapse coming, like like going back? Um, <laughs> do you ever like uh, do, th do those things ever come up again? You know where right. Um, uh, only only once I'd say I think it was in 2003. I I was you know when you're when you're let's just say in a lot of marriages in the very beginning you're still getting to know each other you're still and you can have disagreements and you're still immature in a lot of ways you haven't you've only grown together for a year or two but so uh, so likening that to my experience with the lord um i was in i was super immature still i was still trying to you know understand how god worked in my life i was impatient with my prayer requests and i'm like how can we have an answer my right? right so there's one time i just got fed up and i'm like that's it i'm going out to buy some satanic stuff i'm just done I'm I'm angry, you know, and so um, I went out and when I got out to the store, I was going in to buy like some different things I used to use in witchcraft and I literally got out of the car to go in the store and I turned around and I'm like, oh no, where's my keys? And my keys were locked in the car. And I just felt like God was laughing at me. Like, wow. you think you're going to go, you're not going and you're not doing anything. I got you, man. And I just, I repented right then, like right in that moment. And I went, I went and drove to the pastors and I was like, I was going to go buy witchcraft stuff. You got to pray for me. And they were like, you got, did you repent? I'm like, yeah, I repented. And they're like, you're good, man. Just rest in his love. You know, we'll pray with you. But I was learning. I didn't know the love of God. And it was kind of like for a second, that thing came back where I was like, oh my gosh, I thought about going back to this stuff for one second because I got angry at God and I, I thought that's it I'm lost like I still didn't understand the depth of God's love you know what right, I mean right. but um but I'd say that was it man there's been far far too many miracles and and times that God has showed up for me to ever even question it's like scripture says when you've tasted of his goodness how could you ever turn around mm -hmm. it's like how could you go back and drink vomit when you've tasted of this right. you know yeah. what would you say to that person that's watching right now um that would 
that's dabbling right now, maybe in witchcraft or, or Satanism, or even even is an atheist, man. What would you say to that person right now that says, you know what, everything you're saying right now, Rob, is a bunch of mess? Yeah. Well, we get that a lot, you know, and yeah. and I and I'm kind of used to that. But here's the deal. What I would say is, I would say, you don't know how God feels about you. And I would say, just as the wind blows, God's spirit is moving, whether you can feel it or not, see it or not, it's moving. And Jesus has already, in one single-handed act, he's already taken care of it. Like Scripture says, while we were yet sinners, um, he died for it. And maybe you don't think you're a sinner, but deep down, uh, you know you got issues, you know everybody's got issues, and I'd say that it's only a matter of time um, where you're going to have an encounter and you're going to know how God feels about you. And so I just I would challenge you right now to, to, to just take a second out of your day maybe tonight when you're going to sleep i would challenge you to just say you know what i i I like all this stuff i'm doing or whatever but but god if you're real show me how you feel about me not just show me if you're real but ask him to show you how he feels about you and either he's going to bring somebody in your path that's going to give you a word of encouragement or a word of knowledge or he's going to give you a dream or a vision but something is going to happen he is real he's faithful he's called you and he will do it he will reveal himself to you amen amen uh i want to give you this opportunity to just to really share how people can get a hold of you your new book Give us some, uh, yeah, about you. What? Come okay. on, let's see what well, you got. Bro. All right, so here's the book. Um, it's called And He Unleashed Me to the World. Uh, it's coming out in February, so it should be out by the second weekend of February next month. You can pre-order it right now on my website, robberdosti.com, B-R-A-D-O-S-T-I. And then as soon as it comes out, it'll go right to your house. Um, and basically, it's my whole story. A lot of people, you know, they write me on Facebook or they send in emails and they say, hey, tell me your whole story. <laughs> and I'm like, well, that's why I got 200 pages right here, the whole thing. Because a lot of people, you know, they say, so you just met Jesus and now your life's just been, you know, you just travel place to place and vacation everywhere. No, not really. So all the bumps along the way are in the book, how I got called into ministry, all the growing, the growing process, how I met my wife, how we received a call into ministry and what that looked like, how we've been again to go in the satanic clubs and stuff like that. Um, so anyway, and it, it does go into detail about, um, you know, when I dabbled into the occult, what that looked like, friends that I lost along the way. And so it, it's intense, you know, and it's it took a lot. It took years and years and years. I've been working on it since 2003. But um, that is available on my website. You can pre-order it. Go ahead to the store there. It's called, again, and he unleashed me to the world. Um, you can get a hold of us on Facebook, my Facebook page, facebook.com slash my name, Robert Dosti. It's uh, the official page. You can post prayer requests there, um, test testimonies. You can email us admin at robertdosti.com. And then if you go today, if you pre-order the book today or you go into our store, every resource is $2 off today for the live shows uh, only. Okay. So if you get, if you want to pre-order the book right now, it's $2 off. We also have, this is a a big uh, subject of interest. So I wanted to put it on the show. It's called Angelic Activity Awareness and Activation, the 101 of Angelic Studies. And I just compiled, you know, lots of studies on uh, angels, how angels work, how, how you work alongside angels, what angelic covenant looks like, and, and just all kinds of different things. And I put it into this teaching, and it, I think it helps answer a lot of questions on how to recognize your angels and how they work with you, what their assignments are, and things like that. Yeah, awesome. And then one other thing, this DVD is called Crush the Devil's Head. It's a video mentorship session, and basically it just exposes how the enemy works and how he gets in your mind so that you can watch out for that and you you know that you you with the kind of authority that you have to overcome those kind of assignments that he puts on you. So anyway, yeah. it's all available in the store. Um, yeah, Robert Dosty. Robert Dosty. dot com. Robert Dosty. dot com. Yep. All right. Well, go ahead and spell that for him, just in case. R O B R A D O S T I. Yes, we want to thank you, uh, bro, just for being here with yeah, us thanks, and man. Uh, and uh, just just hanging out, man. It's been great. You you just. Uh, just, just everything that you have inside you is it's a blessing to hear what you've got and uh, where the Lord's taking you and your next man, season. Man. You know, yeah, you're, it's ex- it's exciting. It's, it is, man. It so really thanks, is. thanks for having me. I love what you guys do, and uh, man, glory. I, I feel the glory. <laughs> <laughs> amen, amen. <laughs> thank you, Lord. Um, again, man, I want to thank everybody for logging on to to MediaRevival TV Into the Light. Stay tuned. Uh, stay connected on our Facebook. Uh, 
Go like us on our Facebook. Go to our, our, our Twitter pages. Uh, go to Radio Jesus, uh, at Radio Jesus. Stay connected. We've got a lot of amazing things kind of coming up uh, even tonight. If you're watching this live right now, tune in tonight at 7 o'clock on MediaRevival.tv. we got some amazing things. Rob will be here. He'll be ministering tomorrow night live. If you're in the Birmingham, Alabama area, get down here. Come to Birmingham. Yeah, I mean, if you're far, watch. But if you can't get here, because we really want you to be a part of what God's doing. Um, until then, next time, God bless you. We love you. Amen? Amen. See you later.